Welcome to a full driving review of the new Audi S3 Sportback, the new generation of the Audi A3 in the new S Sports version. Today, main focus here on the hatchback or so called Sportback, but we will also show you the sedan, the Limousine SS3. So, exterior, interior, and the performance driving, as you know, in full HD, full screen. And full length. Let's go. In the front, this new A3 generation for all models gets a bigger front grille. The basic dimensions have not changed. Then, especially the S model here, the S3, gets this darker front grille. But there's also an additional black package here. So you can see here there are dark accentuations, shiny gloss right there on the grille in this honeycomb structure. Also the black Audi rings. You can not only get it as an additional one model, but really also later on with an additional package. Also the shiny glossy spoiler right there. And here in the S3, big design graphic here on the side. And this is indeed a real air intake, not only a fake one. Headlamp, new design in the new generation. Comes standard with LED, optional the matrix LED with an elaborated high beam function. And you can see here the daytime running light has a special signature, like in the S line here with vertical dots, and then also another one additionally on the top. And when you have the hazard lights on or just a normal turning indicator, here we go. With the matrix LED option, you also have this cascading effect. As standard, an S3, if you do not have the dark package here or the black package you would have the frame these insert both in silver as well as the side bumper here the additional one for the s3 this would also then come as a silver contrast the length of the audi s3 sportback is 4 meter 34 40 foot 2 or 171 inches also available as a sedan we soon show that to you as well Wheels come from 18 inch for the S3 and optional these 19 inch in different stylings, so even more massive impact. And interesting is that suspension wise, you either have a fixed suspension minus 15 millimeters to the base version, or then the optional adaptive suspension also minus 15 millimeters. But here in this case for the S3, you can also combine it to the 19 inch wheels. So with the A3, adaptive suspension is 18 inch wheels maximum. Here, they can also combine it with the 19 inch wheels. That's more a philosophy thing, you know, because Audi didn't want two big wheels for the normal A3 with the adaptive suspension because then the riding would be a little bit stiffer. It is here definitely stiffer with the S3, but we'll find out later about this compromise between stiffness and comfort. The hatch, of course, ends just right here in typical hatch style, dropping line above the door handle, and then this strong C pillar. The sedan, then, of course, will. A little bit different look and here again with this package you have this shiny black element the additional spoiler here at the lower part so overall a rather subtle design in the side profile that might change in the rear in the rear we can see a typical hatch shape but then this new generation more horizontally drawn tail lamps with a modern signature on the inside black audi rings again because of this additional dark package and in the lower part here first of all a honeycomb structure right here then a big diffuser and these are real exhaust pipes no covering at all no beauty tips this is the real deal so no job for the auto fuel fake exhaust police today i think it's really interesting because designers quite often have told me yeah, you know, we need these fake exhaust tips because then we can integrate them better in a lower bumper. 
Um, yeah, of course, you cannot put a bumper around it then. Then you need these beauty tips as heat shields, basically. But here, I think, it is very well integrated in the lower bumper. Yeah, there's nothing below it, but I think this is a nice solution, isn't it? So, yeah, I usually prefer the real deal, you know. And here we have the sedan, 4 meters 50, 14 foot 8 or 177 inches. That means it's 15 centimeters or 6 inches longer than the hatchback. Same wheelbase, of course, it's just a different overhang in the rear. And of course, a different styling. This one, the more you know, classic or fluent design. To me, visual-wise, I prefer it not only because of the font today, also because of the color. This one here is called Tango Red, a very strong red once again. And then you can see we also have the black accentuations right here and there as well, and the lower bumper. So with this very vehicle, not only a black styling package, but also an additional carbon fiber styling package. This is an option where we have more carbon fiber right here. And once again, here also at the sides, you can see more black accentuations. And these are also 19 inch wheels, the biggest ones that are available here in this two-tone scheme. And the rear of the sedan also elegant and sporty at the same time. The rear spoiler for the sedan would usually be in the vehicle color as standard. It's already quite massive. And then option again, this carbon fiber package where you have an additional contrast. Then of course, it's even more screaming out. So if you want a more elegant solution, stick with the base vehicle color rear wing. But here in the way, of course, even more sporty. Then in the lower part, you can see once again, you're also with the sedan, real exhaust pipes four times no fake exhaust whatsoever so very strong look here and here once again with the black s3 logo so what's your take are you more the sport bag or the sedan guy So what do we have here? The S3 gets a 2.0-liter TFSI with 310 horsepower, turbo petrol engine, 2.0-liter 4-cylinder, 400 newton meters of torque, 4.8 seconds is the acceleration figure to 100 kilometers or 62 miles an hour, and here also then all-wheel drive, so front plus rear on demand with a clutch system. So we'll see how that one plays out in the driving part. And you can see here some red accentuations where the cylinders are underneath. Car keys, slim and light and good quality. S logo when you have an S line or the true S here. Then the dog closing sound. Very solid inside of the doors. Top part here is somewhat soft touch, not too soft though. Then a nice bright insert here and a cool design of these door handles from the inside. It's actually quite practical to use them like this and it's also a nice design. Then here also clicking buttons for the windows. And also with a two-step so we can go all the way or just slightly and also you know with this galvanized top here for face marks <laughs> or some bottles on the inside. Optional Bang & Olufsen sound system. This is a really cool one, great sound, but even the mid-trim sound system already sounds quite cool. Then this interior of the S3, you get a sportier steering wheel with perforations at the sides. The new age 3 generation general has these air vents right here, pretty prominent. And you not only control where it's coming from like this, but also open and close, so it's the same time. So. Um, like this side, like right and left, but at some point it opens completely or closes completely, so you have to watch out for that. Soft touch dashboard, and then seating wise, you always get the sport seats with the integrated head restraint as standard for the S3. Usually it would start with fabric on the inside, or you could also get it with Alcantara on the inside, but it always depends on the market. And the good thing here in the compact segment, Although this is the optional animal skin seat in this very vehicle, usually most cars are animal free as for the seating now, as for the A3 generation, because even if you have Alcantara on the inside or fabric on the inside, the outside then would be leather red. And that's actually quite cool. And they even use PET bottles, so recycled materials then for these new seats. So really step forward as for sustainability in the 
A3 and also here in this S3 in general. And we would also advise you to go for the fabric of the Alcantara seat if possible, because they stay also just on a practical reason, cooler in summer and warmer in winter. And they're also more comfortable because here the slick surface, no matter if it's leather or leatherette, is always less comfortable because it's just harder to sit on. And especially this stitching here, which looks amazing in this quilting stru quilted structure, but it's you know not that good for the long-term seating comfort. Then here, the steering wheel. It's actually, in this case, quite large, I think. Could be a little bit smaller, but here the functionality is quite good. Up and down, smooth process in a manual one. Seating is, in, in this case here, electric, and you'll find a nice seating position. So the seat form of these seats here is already quite nice. So they look sporty, but still deliver you a good comfort. One means 86 or 6 foot 1, and we still have enough headroom left. There is also a panoramic roof optionally available that you, you know, would lose a little bit of headroom, but you can still live with it even if you're tall. And this is a sample here of the sport seat with the fabric on the inside. For the A3, it would come like this as an optional sport seat, integrated head restraint and then fabric on the inside with these yellow contrasts and the leather red also on the outside. And here then also sourced from PET belts, so recycled materials going full cycle. Really cool. In the S3, Sportback and Sedan, you would get it as the same seat form. However, the fabric on the inside then would be dark with some gray contrasts, or then also optional with the Alcantara on the inside, also in a dark scheme with gray contrasts. So I think very interesting options for that. And that's how it works in detail. Here around 45 PET bottles used for the fabric seats and over 100 they can use actually for the whole car interior for floor mats and so on, and for you know dampening material and so on, really cool. So it's getting shredded first, and then they make these pellets out of it, and these pellets can be then dissolved into this yarn, and this yarn you can then use again, just as normal fabric right here for the different materials, and this then is your recycled material, which really feels high class, is also breathable and so on. So a really good idea to make the car more sustainable, to reduce petroleum use, and of course also even more important to reduce animal skin use. Pretty cool. And again, different colors also available depending on if A3 or S3. So here now the interior overview, again with a very prominent air vent here. And it's you know working in the opposite direction here. So this would be closed, this is all the way open. And this is then here to change the direction in between, so to speak. And whereas on the other side, this would be closed and this would be open. Yeah, you have to um, somehow remember that. The screen setup would be like this. Left side, 10.25 inch as standard. And then optionally these 12.3 inch, so bigger virtual instrument as an option. I think they could have made it standard in the S3 for that price. And on the right side, Always this size, 10.1 inch. And this is very nicely integrated. Soft touch dashboard and also with a sporty contour stitching here on the top part. Then we have the Quattro logo right here and it's very nice insert here. You can touch it, it's not covered with anything. So um, a nice, you know, open cell carbon fiber, we could call it that way, pretty cool. And soon more deals to both screens. This is here touch then now and Really cool that we still have a manual climate unit. So this is the best then if you compare VW Golf, Skoda Octavia, Seat Leon, Audi A3 in this new generation. This here is the only one that still has manual climate knobs. I did prefer the turning dials before, but still this would then be my favorite of the four siblings as for this option right here. Then in the lower part, you have the drive select. You can pick it right here. This is placed a little bit too low maybe it's cool to have this um button here still yes definitely hmm yeah but we'll see how it plays out uh, while driving definitely in the further lower part then we have two usb-c chargers you can plug your cable right in there apple carplay or android auto however carplay would also be available wirelessly and then there's also inductive charging pad underneath here new dsg shifting Sorry, not called DSG at VW, but s -tronic at Audi, but same technology. Shift by wire, so no mechanical link. Therefore, they can make it so small. Seven-speed s -tronic right here. And the transition between drive and reverse is really smooth. So it goes faster when you ease the car in and out. Black start-stop engine button. And on the right side, you have like this 
sliding volume um, knob. Yeah. Well, <laughs> um, yeah, about that. That could also be just a manual dial. I think also not a step forward. This is more for the passenger to control. Further down the middle console, you have either an open cubby hole like this, or you can make it then to a cup holder, which has also adaptive sides. So why not? Definitely space for your key. And then a nice leatherette cover here for the armrest and very well, well attached. And underneath, you have some more space. Steering wheel and instruments. Here on the steering wheel, we have a manual volume control. That's good to have right here. And also for the voice input, for example, the hotkey. This is like a favorite hotkey and, um, you know, you can do with it whatever. On the left side, you can change the view in the digital instruments and you can also change the other elements in the digital instruments. So the left part here is just for that. And when we take a deep look at that, you can have, for example, the map in there like this, or you can also have the map all over the screen. This is, of course, the best thing about the virtual instruments right here, that you have this flexibility to do it like this. Or then, yeah, once again, there's more classic view, so this is also possible. However, um, you know, you can always change something right here if you like. Maybe not while driving. But one thing you can easily do while driving is here, for example, zoom in and out of the map. And in the MMI, you can also change the layout. You stay with the classic sport gauges or you can go with the dynamic gauges. You can see the RPM meter changes a little bit in there or there's also the S performance gauge available. Then you have, you know, like in... For example, also we know from the RS models by Audi, the RPM meter like a digital way, right centralized. And one of the useful options is the head-up display with current speed, allowed speed, and also some assistance systems info, or also if you have a root set, then some GPS arrows. Infotainment screen up close. You either have this or this main menu, so um, I would really rather use this one. Is that to me a little bit more clear? Then you can have the hotkeys yet at the left side for whichever you want to see. GPS, you can have this satellite view. It's also a test track for today. Um, but you can also deactivate it and have a more um, simple view of the map. The CPU is actually quite responsive overall. Car settings, for example, is always nice to look at the drive select, where when we also have the adaptive suspension, these driving modes will also impact the stiffness of the suspension. And Always interesting to see is of course well with the, with the smartphone connection here the Apple CarPlay very well integrated all the way over the screen and let's listen to the 15 speakers B&O sound system 680 watts and for a compact vehicle this really yeah sets a standard it's a very very clear sound However, if you don't want to spend too much money, the mid-trim sound system, as I said, is also already sounding quite good without spending too much money. But here, of course, this would be yeah, the top thing you can get. And using the voice input works well for GPS address or here for temperature. Set temperature to 22 degrees. I'll increase the temperature to 22 degrees. There we go. However, since this is... Luckily, a car where we still have the manual climate unit here with a you know button. We don't need that one that often, probably more than for a GPS input. Now let's check out the rear. First of all, design-wise, here there's hard pack in the rear, but then there's a silver contrast. And again, these nice door handles from the inside. It's a really nice design clue, but also at the same time practical. So yeah, in indeed very interesting. Then we can see here also the same design as for the front seats for the rear that you would also have when you have a different surface. In the middle part, we can already see they use two USB-C supplies now in this middle tunnel. And there's a substantial middle tunnel, definitely. So let's get inside, see what the result is. You do have more room than in the predecessor generation. Here. This is recess here at the back part of the seat, so we still have some leg room left and especially more headroom than in the predecessor. So this works very well, again with one with a 6 or 6 foot 1, and it would also be no problem in the sedan. Actually quite nice and cozy seating position here in the rear. You remember that Golf and the A3, they share the same wheelbase. If you want more leg room in the rear, you would need to go for the Skoda Octave or the Seat Leon, which now both have a longer wheelbase 
in you know in the platform siblings. Other than that, you're sitting on the middle part here. Um, yeah, it's quite stiff. Then here, the surface here, it works for shorter ways. I would say, isofix at the outside parts each, and we can also fold the seats from here if we like to. But it's also easily possible from the trunk. Now to the trunk, S3 Sportback, here we go, 325 liters of capacity, that means a loss of 55 liters here for the S3 model because of the all-wheel drive parts, you know, then you lose a little bit of height right here from that cover. There's a net, you can, you know, secure some things underneath, however, you can also remove that and see here, underneath there's also still a place for a replacement tire, um, at least a very shallow one <laughs> it looks like there you can also see you now that you lose some height and still good and practical dimensions and the advantage here of the sport bag is that you have this easy access here this can be removed and then you can easily reach over and also for example just fold the middle part but you can also fold these parts or then do it a two-third one-third split whatever you desire and this would be the maximum setup so very well to use and now interior for the S3 sedan. By the way, here this contrasting black roof. This is then exclusively available for the sedan or the limousine, however you want to call it. And interior right here. It's the same basically. Here you can also see the nice puddle light here with the Audi rings right there. It's a nice projection. And in the front, the sport bag, so the hatch and the sedan, the limousine right here. They're just the same. You can, again, just pick different colors. A difference would then be for the rear, because it's a little bit different as with the headroom. It has more headroom than the predecessor generation. And, you know, considering with the hatch, it's not a big difference. Of course, you have a slightly falling roofline, but you'll also easily fit in there as a tall adult. Now the trunk of the S3 sedan. So the main difference is you have more length than in the hatchback, so that's the advantage. The disadvantage would be you cannot load things in and out as easily because in the hatchback you would have an open area here. Interesting thing here is that especially the S3 Sportback does lose a lot of luggage capacity. First of all, also because of the orbit drive um, and the parts you need for that, you lose in height and also the normal car battery has moved from the front to the rear underneath the trunk for weight balancing reasons and that's why it's also 325, 325 liters here of boot capacity the same as for the hatchback whereas normal A3 hatch to A3 sedan there would be a difference of 45 liters for the sedan so usually sedan trunk more capacity here in these sport models it's the same. Welcome to Thomas's active driving lounge here with the Audi S3 and we'll hammer it here on the Tress track and well, let's see about this launch control as well. Dynamic mode, ESC Sport, so this first step, S shifting mode and I would say let's go. That's 160 kilometers an hour. Really nice acceleration due to this all-wheel drive. Also punch from the rear, but very smooth and even out. And here now in the dynamic, dynamic, dynamic mode, we have the rear uh, the, the overall suspension stiffer. So when I'm doing a lane change here, for example, really good feedback. We can also drive in this small chicane, for example. So when you look at the steering wheel here, very precise movements. I hardly have to grab around, so very direct, this progressive steering, which is standard then for the S3, really cool, wow, such a great steering feeling, so here, there's like every single degree command is being transported to the road, and when we accelerate out of the corner here now, like this, So smooth indeed, so it's um, you know it's a very good acceleration, but it's not that you would say mm, you no, know, you, you can't control it or so, you know. So a very very balanced and controllable vehicle, and I feel that it's even more precise here in this new generation. So 
yes, it's a two-liter four-cylinder, so, you know, it's not that you have a super roaring sound, but the sound actuator is giving us something here. Also good as for the noise insulation as for the wind noises, but here, again, how stable the car remains. Here in this dynamic mode, the suspension is a little bit stiffer, so it, there's also less body roll and so on. Nice. And just here, like, I can go all the way over the track and so easy. Using a shifting pedal is also a lot of fun. Just shift down yourself, you know, like this here, and then you can hammer the throttle even better, or shift up again, especially in here in the corner, or that you're, for example, in a lower gear at the outside of the corner. Here, for example, now back to second gear, so I'm more on the RPMs. There we go. Bang. Bang. Really nice. So the cool thing about this car is it feels really sporty. You can have a lot of fun. But at the same time, it remains so comfortable. So here, hardly any shaking up. But even if there's some bumps in the road or something, you hardly feel them. So this adaptive suspension is such a pleasure. And when you would compare it, for example, here, drive select and go, for example, to the comfort mode, then it's a little bit softer. The steering is also softer, so you have less resistance in the steering. But still, the car already feels sporty. It's now then in the D-shifting mode. That means, you know, the RPMs are not turned up that high. But at the same time, if you use the shifting pedals, for example, you can just shift down these gears again, and you also have a good punch out of the corner. Not so much sound feedback then, but here, even in the comfort mode, this car drives sporty. And once again, you know, it's not that it's like super stiff all the way straight, but you see, there's no annoying leaning to the outside then. But of course, we have more feedback in the dynamic mode. So in this new generation, what they have also done is widen this span they have between comfort and sportiness even further. So yeah, what a flawless driving feeling. As for understeer and so on, yeah, I mean, the all-wheel drive, um, takes that away a little bit, so then it's less of a problem, definitely. So the more I hammer the throttle, the more torque is being also transported to the rear wheels. And so you see, when I really now try to force the issue now, like really like, like this, here, yeah, look at how, how calm the steering remains. So under steering here, you know, just perceived, actually not a problem at all. So I think that's also something they definitely accomplished here. And once again, so silky smooth in the corners. It's, to me, one of the, you know, best balanced sporty vehicles. And now to some city driving with the S3 Sportback. And I can't help it. I have to start it in dynamic mode. Yeah, even if it's just up to 50 kilometers where, you know, this is allowed here. Always quite fun. <laughs> so, you can drive it, of course, in dynamic mode here also in street traffic, as long as you stay legal. RPMs then are turned up higher and so on, sporter driving feeling, but if you just want to cruise, of course, at some point it's also, yeah, maybe a little bit annoying if you want to stay calm a little bit, but here, especially in the roundabout, also nice from this sound actuator on the interior. I think we can live with that. So because the engine is so well insulated, you wouldn't hear so much from it. So it's also okay if you have some sound boost here. And once again, driving dynamics is really cool. And I think the suspension is really not too stiff for normal street driving. So although we have the 19 inch wheels mounted here, the combination 19 inch wheels with the adaptive suspension is totally fine. And even more so when you yeah, that's the one thing, drive select here, place the lower down below, so most of the time you would probably stay in the auto mode. Um, even more so in the auto, in the comfort mode, and the suspension is even more comfortable. And this is also the reason why I would always prefer the S3 if you compare it, for example, to an RS3. Even if money plays no role, and you would say, yeah, an RS3 has more performance and so on, will come again in this new generation. The S3 is the better compromise between comfort and sportiness. The car you can better use in everyday driving life situations because you don't have 
you know, this disadvantage. RS, yes, the engine will be more fun and so on and so on. But you have a disadvantage that you lose comfort and you don't do that with the S3. So I already told you that with the A3 and especially with the sedan, by the way, because, you know, yeah, I mean, it's a visual thing. And I also felt that the sedan drives maybe even a little bit better, even though, you know, it's not just minor differences between sedan and hatchback, really. Um, the A3 is one of the best compact segment vehicles here now and that also counts here for the S3 just that you have a little bit more punch whenever you need it and even if you are in the normal driving mode here on you know just countryside route what you can always do quite pretty easily unlike you know some, switching something in the drive select just pull the lever backwards here go to the S shifting mode then you have you know this more sporty shifting method RPMs are turned up higher and you can hit it and then get yeah it's really fierce punch right there pretty cool and same thing you can also do even if you are in the D mode just use the manual pedals here and shift shift on yourself then you really know you know which gear you can put in and it's also just a lo lot of fun you know so shifting yourself here with the pedals really cool and hold the right press and hold the right pedal then you go back to the automatic shifting mode here again at 100 kilometers an hour 60 miles an hour, very good for the noise insulation. It's one of the most silent compact vehicles that also accounts to it. And I mean, the suspension here, the adaptive suspension is so smooth that you would not expect this is here a sporty version. Yet again, it has still the sporty driving features. And to me, this is also always speaking for, um, for these sporty vehicles. Because who is buying that for a race trick only? Probably not only you know some but probably none <laughs> you always buy it because you want to drive it every day and then you still have the comfort but the spoiliness at the same time that's really cool overview is by the way actually decent um, the B pillar is quite thick therefore I really would always go for the blind spot monitor the base assistance systems are in this vehicle also an autonomous emergency brake for example and then the extended functions um, are in a package here, for example, we also have the adaptive cruise control. You um, activate or deactivate the um, lane assist here with a separate yeah, the turning indicator column. And here, for example, then we have everything activated. Lane keeping assist with adaptive cruise control. So the distance is kept to the car in front of us. And here also the lane is being kept. Always keep your hands on the steering wheel. But here we can already see that we're being kept in the center of the lane in a very smooth way. So it's not in interfering that much that it would be annoying but it's giving me a very safe feeling so so far from all the assistance systems really flawless it also has this predictive cruise control feature so traffic sign recognition but also when we approach a roundabout or something that speed is being reduced in advance so then we can also save some fuel that's very interesting and I also reset the consumption meter now because we earlier had this acceleration and I always want to give you also a minimum figure. One reason, you know, a lot of you guys are watching probably also uh, maybe fascinated by uh, S3, but then see like, oh, that's coming around 50K euros or US dollars and like, uh oh, maybe I pick a normal A3. And that's the base price for that. If you pick some extras, you can easily then reach also like 60K or even more. Already base A3 is one of the most expensive compact vehicles, but in this case we also say it's also one of the best. But then you could also maybe save some money, get the 1.5 TSI, and that one was really fuel saving, so about like five, six liters more kilometers, which is like easily 40 mpg, sometimes even 50 mpg plus. UK figures, of course, always a little bit higher. Here, the predictive cruise control also already told me now, reducing the speed, really interesting. Um, yeah, but here then with the 2 liter TVSI and the more horsepower orbit, of course, the consumption will be higher. I'll soon also have a minimum consumption figure for you when you're just like using cruise control and so on. But that would be the thing, you know. But to me, the most important thing about this car here when road driving is when you cruise it, have it in low RPM, have it in comfort mode as for the adaptive suspension, even with 19 inch wheels, you could think. This is not necessarily like a harsh sports model, 
you know, this very good and comfort. But yet again, when you put in the sports mode or the dynamic mode here, make the suspension stiffer and so on, then you can just let it all out once again and maybe scroll back to the test track part. And here we can go back to the speed again as shifting mode 80 to 100. Well, yeah, that summarizes all of this vehicle. Well, in our consumption test for the day, the minimum you could score going just about 100 kilometers or 60 miles an hour, just cruise control is about 7 liters on 100 kilometers. That would be 34 mpg US and 41 mpg UK. However, if you also use the performance a little bit, you can easily, of course, rather get to 8 or maybe 9 liters on 100 kilometers, which would be then a little bit less than 30 mpg US or barely 30 mpg UK. It really depends on what you or how you drive, but just that you know what would be the best possible. And now to our conclusion for today with the new Audi S3. Here today, focus on the sport bike, but as we've shown you, also available as a sedan. Well, exterior-wise, you have sporty accentuations, especially if you go for this dark or black package, but you can also have it a little bit more elegant when you have these contours then in the silver way. I would probably leave them with the silver way, but it's of course up to you. There are also very nice Thomas Blue colors available for this vehicle. As we've for example shown you with the A3 sedan in the normal review. So you should also check out these reviews then later on if you're not only interested in the S version. But definitely still a good choice of sportiness and elegance at the same time from the exterior. The interior it's also very cleanly designed, a lot of touch functions, yes, but the menu structure is very simple and easy and the CPU is also good, so I think it's a good solution. And you still have a manual climate unit here, so that's also the best between the four siblings, BW Golf, Skoda Octavia and the Seat Leon. A very well to use interior, straightforward, I think. Yeah, these prominent air vents, I think they're a matter of preference. I got used to them meanwhile now. Very good that in this new A3 generation, and the same counts also for the S3, you get a lot of good choices for animal-free seats that are even more full cycle sustainable using recycled materials. At the same time, they offer you great seating comfort and also are brazzable. So that's how you do it nowadays. Really nice. More space also in this generation here. Also, if you can compare it to the predecessor, due to the all-way drive system, the sedan will especially lose in trunk capacity if you compare it to the normal A3 model. That's a disadvantage. Other than that, of course, the main difference sedan to the hatchback is sedan longer trunk, not that well to access. Hatchback shorter trunk, but easier to access. Yeah, but still also as an S3 version, very well usable. And overall, I think it is one of the best compact segment cars here on the market at the moment. Here in the S version and the sporty version, of course, even more performant, have more horsepower, double the horsepower tune we had last time with the 1.5 TSI, so good drive forward definitely, but also in the dynamic, really nice, especially with the adaptive suspension. I was surprised how comfortable this car still is, although we had the 19-inch wheels mounted here today, so this adaptive suspension works very, very well. I would also recommend uh, to go for this one, especially with the sporty model, unless you really want to have it in a very, very stiff way than the driving, of course, yeah. <laughs> so overall, I think that's the best about this vehicle, this compromise, you know, a very good compromise. Compromise always sounds negative, but here it's a really good one. You can drive it very, very sporty. It's a lot of fun to drive it, but at the same time, it has a lot of comfort. So to me, this one would also be the more desirable car if you compare it with an RS3 when you think about everyday driving life experience. So overall, I think... Really, really good rating from us here today. It's just the price that is really, really high. So also one of the most expensive compact vehicles you can go for. So I hope you enjoyed this episode here for today. Thank you so much. Always great to have you on board here. See you next time.